This meeting is being recorded. Meeting is being recorded. Oh, and then you might have to go back and forth, right? So we'll leave it. We won't yeah. zoom out. Okay. Yeah. So when you need to go oh, to his images. Okay. Yeah, he has okay. We are live. Hello, everyone watching around the world. I am your host, Samuel Locher, for this last final installment of the Jada Talk speaker series for the Jada Paris 2021 Art Fair. I am joined once again by Ginat Salman, Orly Bahar Levy, and Ruby Bakal. All joining us from Israel, correct? Right? What? Excellent. Right. So we are here now for our final. We're actually taking down the installments in the gallery right now as we speak here in Paris. We're winding down. Today was the last day of the exhibition, and uh, this is our last talk. We saved the best for last. We're here uh, to talk about the art of Ruby Bacall. Ruby, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for hosting me. Yes, absolutely. So let's hop into it. Um, do you guys want to tell us a little bit more about Orly and Ruby and Gina about how you guys got involved with the ba uh, Babylonian Heritage Center together? Orly, want to start? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the creator of the Babylonian Jewry Heritage Center. Oh. See? See? There we go. <laughs> Hi, Ruby? Yes. Oli, do you want to put your presentation on? Oh, you have one? Who, me? Yes, I think okay, so. Okay, let's do it. Let's do okay. It. okay. I think I will start with the mine. Okay. Okay. Sorry, sorry, just a moment, please. Okay, now we are on. And we don't see the presentation if you opened it. You don't see? Do I share? Uh, yeah, someone sees it? Yes, share your screen again. Yeah. You can see? No. No? Mm -mm. You need to take out, to get, get out from, from your uh, uh, screen, from the share screen. Go to your desktop and then do a share screen again and then take your presentation. Yeah. Do it again. Okay, just a moment. I'm out. <laughs> now you see something? No. <laughs> Just go again to, to your uh, uh, desktop. First of all, you need to get out from, from the share screen. Yeah, go back. Here we go. Okay. Oh, Great. Okay, we we stopped uh, talking when uh, when we I told you about the Jewish community who were in a way they were forced to leave Iraq and then come to Israel at the beginning of the nineteen fifties. And, but they uh, came as refugees and they stayed in a transit camp. And from this point, they had to start building their life from scratch. And um, in our museum, we really wanted to celebrate the occasion of the 17th century of the anniversary of the mass immigration from uh, Iraq, of the Iraqi Jewish community. And uh, I tried to think about a special way to do it. So uh, one of the ideas that came out was to um, 
to make a connection with uh, an Israeli artist that was born to Iraqi family here in Israel and to try to see from his point of view as an artist how it was to be a son or a daughter of an uh, Iraqi family who came to Israel 70 years ago and uh, how it was to grow, grow up in Israel as a son of Iraqi family. So 70 years, exactly 70 years after uh, the law of the uh, waiver of the Iraqi citizenship was published in Iraq, 9th of March, 2020, Ruby started to uh, paint his uh, monumental work in the walls of our gallery. I think it's 40 meters, no? Something like that. 40 meters. As you see here. Yeah. What? As you see. It's 40 meters, no? Uh, yeah, yes. something like that. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> It's a, almost on the full floor, on the full sub, uh, second floor of the museum. And uh, before, before he started to work uh, as a curator, I uh, saw only the early sketches. We talked about the concept of what we are going to make there. So, uh, and I had to, uh, you know, to count on Ruby but he will do uh, something that, uh, you know, the museum would like. And, uh, you know, as a curator, usually uh, you see what you are going to hang on the walls. You have a concept and you go to the artist's uh, studio and you choose the works and you know what you are going to see. But in this case, I couldn't see the, you know, the the last, uh, the, the last, uh, the end of it. I, I, I knew what I, I want. I had to count on Ruby. And uh, that is the way we started our, our path together. This is the and problem with the I, What? I'm saying this is the problem with site specific. You don't really know <laughs> what was going to be. <laughs> exactly. And uh, also, what happened, we wanted, uh, you know, the artist to paint on the wall while, while the audience is watching. But then we had the, you know, the COVID-19 crisis and the museum was closed. And most of the time, Ruby uh, was working alone in the museum. And he used to send me photos by, uh, you know, but by mail or by uh, WhatsApp. And this, is, was, this was the way we connected with each other. So really, really, we had to count on each other during all the way of uh, making this work. But uh, it took long several months. So now yeah. let's start. Let's start. Um, I will start with the first two walls in the gallery. The first two walls in the gallery talks about the transit camps from uh, Ruby's point of view. You know, uh, Ruby's parents came to Israel as young children. And what we see here is like an uh, utopic uh, transit camp. You know, I, I, I showed you before photos from the transit camp, but you see that the colors are optimistic. You know, it looks very calm and very utopical, and uh, it doesn't uh, look like how it, uh, how it used to be. And uh, I think that uh, because uh, Ruby's parents were young children, you know, they remembered the thing, you know, like children. It was uh, like a big uh, playground for the children. 
And uh, this is what, what they uh, told Ruby, and this is what he, I think, correct me, Ruby, but if I am wrong, this no, is you're what you're right. This is, uh, again, it's a problem. It's a problem with nostalgic. Uh, people yes. forgetting a lot. And right. uh, basically, they just uh, imagine only the good things about it. Uh, about yes. the past. The card, just remembering a little bit of the smell, a little bit of the colors, and basically that's it. But they don't uh, remember all the struggle and all the hunger that they had. Uh, exactly. they just remember the fun time. And this exactly. is nostalgic. And this is the reason, this is all the stories that I heard. And from that stories, I started to do the painting after the research exactly. that I did with my parents and my other family. Exactly. What we, what I also want to uh, uh, show you, there is a motive here. There is a person that we can see here, but uh, carries a music instrument that we call in Arabic santu. You see this one, mm. and uh, this santu was a music instrument, but then. Uh, Ruby's family carried with them all the way from Iraq to Israel. As you remember, I showed you Hugi Patau, this man with the instrument, but was a famous uh, musician in Iraq. Yeah. And he was the great, great grandfather of Ruby's mother. So in spite of all the difficulty, it was very important for the family to bring something from the family heritage to Israel. The young girl who is playing here with the, the, with the children is Ruby's mother. Nu, but in, it, her name in Iraq was Nu, and in Hebrew, in Israel, they changed her name to Nuit. Here again, we also see how much the, you know, the transit camp was very calm and uh, very optimistic. Mm. The other two walls talking about the way the Iraqi Jews uh, started their life in Israel. You know, we can say that there is two kinds of immigrants. One kind is, you know, is looking at, at the past, is stuck in the past. And uh, to show them, we, uh, Ruby chose us to choose to show his uh, uncles, the uncles of his mother, who opened the barber shop in Ramat Gan in 1953, his, their grandfather was the barber, the barber of the uh, king of Iraq. And they, start, they decided to stick with the, this profession. Their barber shop didn't change since the 50s, as you see here. And they, we can say that they were, you know, they, they look back at the past and they, they didn't look forward and they stick in the, in the past. Like other, you know, if we think about other um, people who immigrate from one place to another, some of them also today make the same way, you know, they are, they are stuck in the past and they don't look on the future. The other kind of immigrant is here is uh, Ruby's father, Latif. Ruby's father came from a family that uh, dealt with candies in Iraq. They had a candies manufacturing in Iraq. And when they came to Israel, they tried to, uh, to open the can candies shop here in Israel, but it didn't work out. So when Latif was only 15 years old, he said to himself, I have to help my family to go on. I have to help my family to, uh, you know, to make money in the new state of Israel, how we are going to live. So he started to be, 
to work as a, in painting walls. Uh, he, heard, he worked very hard and he progressed and he opened the company and uh, he, uh, he did it. He did it here in Israel. So this is the other kind of uh, immigrator. You know, the one who look, uh, who look uh, to the future and thinks how he's going to manage and how he's going to go on with his life uh, without looking back. The other two walls are talking about the next generation. Here we can see Tal uh, Ruby's brother. Tal Ruby's bra brother was born in Israel, like, like Ruby, and in spite of all, he decided to immigrate to Thailand. So now, he, how we call it, uh, he now he started from scratch in Thailand, and he has a silversmith uh, and goldsmith uh, shop in Thailand. And he makes uh, jewels in Thailand. But what is very interesting is that the motifs that he uses in his work is influenced from Iraqi amulets, Iraqi Jewish amulets. So in a way, also, Tal is, look back, is looking back on his past. The roots. On his mm -hmm. roots. On his own yeah. roots. To his roots, exactly. Mm -hmm. To the Iraqi roots. Yeah, but uh, he just decided not to continue living in Israel. But it's really mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. So he moved to Thailand. Mm -hmm. The last wall in the gallery is uh, about uh, Ruby. <laughs> He's uh, an artist in his studio. And uh, what we see here is the, you know, uh, Ruby in his studio. And around, we can see uh, sketches from the, his work uh, transitions and some works from his, uh, from, you know, his uh, portfolio. And some of them is dust paintings, but uh, soon he will tell you more about it. And some of them is uh, about a uh, landscape from his childhood here in Israel, in the city of Oyuda. Um, Basically, it's a, a fragment from, from my studio. Yeah. Small corner for my studio, and I try to do uh, like a it's like a collage. That it's like a, you can see the studio, but can, you can see also actually painting that hanging on the wall. So it's it's like a it's like a tone play, but it's not really a tone play. Yeah. I'm so glad to have learned more about it. I, I'd seen images of the mural before, but I didn't actually realize how personal each piece of the mural was to your own life, Ruby. It's a beautiful thing. It's so beautiful. You're here yes. leading the charge for the, uh, the modern day Babylonians with your mural. You're right there, you know? You're the poster child. Yeah, but it was really fun to do this project. It took me, I think, Nearly four months. Mm -hmm. I used to go over there like three or four times a week, and it was the time with the corona, so we have a lot of uh, we say again, sorry, say again. quarantine. The quarantine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at the time of the quarantine, I used to go, to go with the, with my bike to the museum, and just I just walked over there on the wall. So a good way to spend the quarantine. My time. Hmm? It's a good way yeah, to spend the time. Yeah, this is my home. <laughs> yes, then look what you have to show for it, too. It's incredible. You, you leave a painting for four months in a place, uh, this is whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby, but I think you... it's a bit... Oh, sorry. No, no, it's okay. I think it will be a correct thing if I am wrong, but I think that we can say that in a way you uh, used the tools and the techniques of the house painter, right? 
in working yeah. in our gallery. And in this way, you uh, you uh, use the techniques of your father, right? Yeah, basically, because if you want to do a big painting, mural painting, you have to work with the painter, like DIY, because, uh, a wall painter, to do the work. Because mm -hmm. you can't work with the small brushes. It's not working. It's not the same. Uh, uh, it's painting on canvas. Yeah, but it's like a small canvas. Yeah, it's a big yeah. wall. So you have to work with big tools. Yeah. Uh, and also, like, uh, especially in this painting, in this uh, image, you can see that uh, I'm just in the beginning of uh, try to capture uh, the painter painting the walls, mm -hmm. and to do the same uh, indexicality sign of the of the the roller, mm -hmm. the painting roller. You have to use the same uh, the same tool to do it. You can't do it with brushes. You have to do it with the roller. Yeah. So this is the the indexicality uh, of the painter. Yeah. This is what your father forwarded to you. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from generation I, I, I to generation. Like, from generation to generation, but I took it from from house painting to the academic. Yeah. Yeah. To, to be a painter, to be an artist. Mm -hmm. This is the evolution, I think, of different generations. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is the evolution. Mm -hmm. Exactly, this is the evolution. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the square shapes, but rapidly we occur in the in the work. I think, in, in a way, they um, they show the time that passes, right? Because you see you see the color, the old color that is down, and on only another another uh, kind of another tune of the color, and another one after it, and so you can see the time that passes. And mm -hmm. it will occur all over the work in the gallery. Mm -hmm. I think Ruby in general is using um, layers as something that connects with time, with your dust paintings and with your layers in the gallery. I think uh, it represents, you know, different maybe time layers you can say because it takes time to do those things it takes time to put one layer after another after another after another yeah this is what nice also about painting because only in mm -hmm. painting you can see the line of time in one frame mm -hmm. you can't see it in movie you can see it in your own life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But only in painting you can see the first uh, brush, uh, the first brush stroke, and the last. Mm -hmm. and this is what they're uh, really exciting about painting. But it, even in movies or uh, or music, no, photographs even photographs. you can see it. Mm -hmm. Photographs, it's a, it's a one shot. It's a real shot. Mm -hmm. I think that in general, we can say that, uh, you know, the work transitions, it, it shows the, the transitions from different kind of point of views. You know, the physical transition from the birthland to the homeland, the transitions of time, mm -hmm. and the transition between generations. And, uh, you know, when you look at it today, 70 years after the moving from uh, Babylonia to Israel, you can think about, you know, not only the Babylonian Jews, because you can think in general about the people who move from one place to another, about the way they want to, uh, to find themselves in the new country. When, when I'm thinking about the Israeli state, there is a lot of uh, people who came from all over the world to live here, like in America. So in one part of you, you want to be an Israeli, and the other part of you want to, uh, you know, keep something from your roots. So you make uh, like a mix inside of you between uh, the, the new country and the old country. And I think it's a it's a very important question, an interesting question, 
what happened to an artist, but his roots is not from the country that he was born in. Uh, does he show in his work um, a point of view of his past or not? Uh, it's a question. And if we're asking ourselves, who is the new Babylonian? Okay, are the, the Jews who are children, grandchildren of Babylonians who went out of Iraq, are they still Babylonians? How they still are they still can call themselves Babylonians? It's a I think it's an important and interesting question. I want to share with you something that happened this week in the museum. Uh, a week ago, we opened a new exhibition about the Iraqi kitchen. And we reconstructed an Iraqi kitchen in the traditional Iraqi Jewish house. And the donor of the exhibition, the woman who gave the money to create the exhibition, is a daughter of uh, Russian Jewish refugees who moved to America. She married an Israeli guy, but was a son of a, an Iraqi family. And she felt very connected to the family. And she decided to donate an exhibition to the Babylonian Jewry Heritage Center. And it's the first time that the, something like that is happening. Usually our donors are from the Iraqi community. So can we call her a new Babylonian? <laughs> I think possibly, I don't right? know. <laughs> I, oh, I thought about it a lot this week when I thought about this Zoom, yeah. this Zoom, and it, I said to myself, maybe and, she's and, also in a way a new Babylonian. At least while the exhibit's up. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a really interesting question. Um, if she is a new Babylonian, like how do you, um, how do you think? How do you say like a culture is something that you can um, learn about and maybe become one of it, make it your own? I think um, today, um, exactly like Ruby's brother. I think he lives in Thailand, but he's still. Uh, take some things from his, his culture and make new things with it. So yeah, it's it's an interesting question. I don't think I have an answer for for it. Um, can you like make culture fluid? Maybe I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. Well, and, and like building off what you're saying too, it's like if there aren't any Jewish people left in Iraq and all you really have left is this diaspora community in Israel and around the world, then who are the Jewish Babylonians of the future? You know, because eventually, you know, you can't expect all the Jewish Babylonians to just intermarry for generations. We know that mm -hmm. doesn't ever work out. So what, what does that look like going forward? And I think that's probably one of the bigger questions you ponder at, at the center in, in Israel, right? Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> Ruby, do you want to talk about the the dust paintings? Yes. Yeah, can, can I do a share screen here with you? Yeah. Yes, of course. Okay, okay, okay. So let me just do the share and then this one. You see it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, just gonna, I'm going to move you all guys to this side. Now I can see. Okay, I want to to show you basically the, the progress of the of the dust painting, and uh, I want to show you basically the first painting that I did in dust, so you can understand how I did all this progress from the first one to to my last painting in dust. So the first one that I did basically it's a self portrait, and you can see in this image it's it's in progress. But you can see all the stencils and you see uh, different kinds of stuff. Like you see knives over there, all the, all the, all the stuff that you can see uh, on the canvas, there are weights because sometimes the, the stencils are moving. So you have to, to put some weight on it. So it's not going to move. Hmm. Um, I'm going to show you another photo. 
from this side, you can see that uh, because if I want to do a self portrait, so it's have to be my own dust. <laughs> and to do so, it's have to be in my own house or in this case, uh, in my own uh, bedroom. And so you can see my bed from, from the right side. Yeah. And this canvas was laying in, in the floor for six months. And uh, every once in a while, like I think like every two weeks, I used to uh, fix in it with the with the spray glue because the dust always moving. So you want to yeah uh, keep it in place. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's not gonna move anymore. Then you can make layer, 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 layer. Uh, so after I moved, I removed all the stuff. You can see only the stencils without all the weights, but you can see the difference between the colors, which mean different times. And when I'm taking all the stencils out, so this is the, the first painting of the, this is like a self-portrait, but a really self-portrait because my DNA is on the canvas. Because uh, the dust, wow. the, the home dust, home dust that we have, 30% uh, of it, it's mixed with our own dead skin and the clothes mm -hmm. that we are wearing, uh, the pollution and uh, the, basically the, the, the earth, the, the, the environment that we have surrounding us. Yeah. So your own skin is on the canvas. Yeah, when I'm saying uh, it's my own dust, it's my it's literally literally my DNA and my uh, my hair even over there, <laughs> my body hair. I don't have a lot of hair, but <laughs> not not quite not quite your blood, sweat, and tears, but still your DNA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but it was the first painting, so it was also experience. But this is it phenomenal. This is phenomenal. Yeah, Look at this. This is yeah, incredible. This is the first one. You just made that next to your bed. This is insane. Yeah, I can't believe how months. well it turned out. Six months. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a really stinky guy, but uh, <laughs> if you're fixing it, so you can make layers. Otherwise, the dust keep on keep on moving. It's really hard to yeah. uh, settle it. Yeah. So I'm going to show you also, after I did the, the self-portrait, I decided to do a big series with the, with the, with the dust. Yeah. And uh, I decided to, to, to go back to my own childhood uh, places and try to, to make a, a project that would talk about the past, but in the present. How, how can you uh, represent your past in the present time? So it's really hard, it's really tricky. So after that, I did the self-portrait. I saw that it's a new material for painting that can use it. So this is the first first day that I put the, the canvas in the side. And this is after six months. So you can see the different layers. So every, every few every few months I'm I'm moving the stencils or taking them out. So mm -hmm. the yeah. canvas will uh, will communicate uh, the the dust. And you see in this area here and here. Uh, just before I remove it, and after that, you can see this is the painting, and this is the 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 water tower. It's really next to, to the, the the museum. Mm -hmm. oh, right. So, I can see it every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now now I can understand why why I, why I decided to do this image. It's because it's really part of my own life, my my own childhood this image of the of the water tower yeah so i'm going to show you another one this one also it's in progress so you can see the progress it's really interesting to see where did i put the canvases yeah where is because I'm not, oh. I'm not doing it in my own studio it have to be outside the studio it have to be in the place that i want to paint mm. this is this is the idea because yeah. you, you want to take the dna of the place that you want to paint right and it's like basically what you want to make it like a, it's like the place will make the painting and not me yeah so just by waiting uh waiting a few months and with fixative uh, i can do it and also with stencils so this is the final uh, wow. uh painting and this one also i did i, I exhibited in the uh, israeli museum 
in Israel Museum in Jerusalem in 2014. It was a big exhibition about many artists, a group, group exhibition of many artists that dealing with dust in different, different mm. techniques. I'm gonna show you another one. And this this is small Iraq. So this is like a little Iraqi community here, or in yeah, Israel? but the, the the small Iraq basically it's a store of uh, of spices. Oh, you want to buy different mean? kind of spices. Very nice. So my mom used to send me over there all the time to buy yeah. uh, some spices. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we started to do to do this painting. And it was laying here for six months. It's in the back of the store. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and this one, it's also just just to show you that uh, not all the time I'm using uh, stencils. In this uh, in this painting, I used uh, rice to make uh, more details of the walls. Yeah. So I have another fragment from the painting, so you can see the different the different time of the canvas. You can mm -hmm. see the dust here. It's much different than this area. In this area, I just removed the stencils. So you see the white canvas. Yeah. So well, this is like much younger than the other layers. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. the different colors. Yeah, it's, it's like a fresh one. Yeah. Yeah. A fresh layer. <laughs> a fresh layer that of dust. The, yeah, it's going to get dusty. <laughs> and because it's not my own studio and basically this is not my place. So sometimes I have some birds that do the... Oh no! <laughs> Doing the oh, stuff no. my painting. <laughs> yeah. And you, uh, and you can see it, it's here. All the the, the, the birds. Wow. Birds the, poop. Birds poop, yeah, birds poop. <laughs> but this one also was in the Israeli music, so I decided to show you these two. And the thing that I realized, I did this project for nearly eight months, and it was in separated places. So every time I used to go with a bike, with a spray can, with glue, and I used to travel from place to another place, another place to another place, and I used to, have it, I used to do it like every two weeks. I used to go with spray and spray it. And only when I finished all the painting, and I took a car and took all the, all the painting to one place, I saw, you can see it here, I saw that there's a lot of different tones the colors, it's really changing between dust in this area or this area. This one is like, it's more uh, brownish. This one is more greenish. This one is more orange. You can see the different colors. I hope you can see the different colors. Hey, can you say, can you say that with, with working with dust, you also found a very original way to show the passing time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a, it's, yeah, just to show it, uh, to show time, to show layers of time, to show you more, more works. And it, it's something that's really difficult to measure physically, right? It's almost like it makes me think of one of the only ways you could kind of like see a physical manifestation of that is like, say you cut open a tree. And you see the rings in the yeah. tree and tell you how old it yeah, is. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know. yeah, you can see uh, the line of the time in one painting. So in this, uh, yeah. this one, it's really easy. You can see the, the darkest layers of the sky. So, so this is like uh, three months, two months, and one month of, uh, of uh, collecting dust. Yeah. Show you another painting. This one, the porch. It was on, on my on my roof, and it was sitting over there for for nearly a year. But basically, oh, wow. to, to do all this kind of, of uh, painting, uh, first of all, I'm using a, a camera and, and just uh, uh, choose the the frame that I want to cut it with stencils because it's going to be a year. So you really have to to know. What, what the image is, is going to. It's not like a, in oil painting, when you just start with a blank canvas. Yeah. Here you really know what the image is supposed to look like in the end of the post. Yeah. I'm gonna show you another. So do you think maybe the, 
exhibition you did in the museum, which also features layers, is like an extension of it, of the dust uh, paintings? Yeah, yeah, I think so also, yeah, because, so yeah, it's funny to say, but yeah, it's like I'm all the time <laughs> using layers, even when I'm talking about my own family, I can cut it by layers and layers and layers, and then I show them to people. Mm -hmm. But yeah, layers, layers and time, I think it's a, it's romantic even to think about. Yeah. It's true, yeah. <laughs> it has anything in it. It has memory, documentation in, in layers, you know. And you can stuff so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is Kikara Tarini. Basically, it's the same technique, but you can see the different kind of colors. Yeah. Uh, I just I just chose some, some of painting that I loved. It's not all of them. But uh, most of the uh, most of the painting taken between uh, eight months to two years even. Wow! Like, like this one. It's more it's more with details. Mm -hmm. But all all the places that I'm painting, it's uh, it's belong to to my own uh, uh, childhood in some in some way. How many your own these? memories? My own memories. Yeah, places they are basically gonna change when you really want to capture some of the iconic like in this one in a, in a, in the cinerama it's a places that we used to go to see some concert yeah. mm -hmm. and it was destroyed it was destroyed uh, four years ago mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so it's nice because I have some of the DNA of the building yeah that I used to go there to see some shows yeah. in my friends. <laughs> How many of these paintings do you have in the works at any one given time? Because there is a process. Uh, normally, months. I'm working between two to five in a year. Okay. Yeah. I'm not working all the time, but only by one. Uh, yeah. it's, it has to be at least like minimum uh, three paintings a year. Yeah. Because then I, I will have a, a certain day that I'm going and fixing. All, all, all the dust mm -hmm. in, in different areas yeah. in the cities. Yeah, I did some serious with the. I try. I tried to do. I did it only with some guys, Israeli artists, uh, and uh, the portrait, the canvas was in their studio. So you have Way Cooper is a photography, uh, uh, Johnny Gold. Gila de Frat, Larry Abramson, a very famous guy, and Oren Eliab also. Basically, all of them very famous artists. And the painting, the dust painting, was in their studio and collecting their own dust. Oh, no. So it's really the, the day DNA. <coughs> <coughs> Um, and this is this is the painting that I have here in my own part. So this oh, is, this one's in progress. Yeah, so this one is really in progress now. So, but the image, the image I did it like in 2017, and this is an etching. This is an etching uh, that I did it with the aquatinta. It's with the acid. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is the this is the this is the last painting, the dust painting, and it's still ongoing, it's still going. <laughs> so you can see only the the other side of it. Yeah. That's it. Awesome. Well, that's beautiful. It's really incredible what you do. I don't even understand how your mind works, where you can figure out how to layer these over time, the different ways, and how to work with a material like that. Like no one works with us. I you you're an innovator. <laughs> You're an innovator. No, I, I saw that a lot of people working with us. Oh, well, yeah, no, that's right. You're, right. You're true. You did, you did do the exhibit with the, the people working with us. Yeah, yeah I did it with another 20 different kind of artists yeah. all over the world. Yeah. Right yeah, some of them do uh, video art, some of them did sculptures, photography, of course. Uh, only another one more artist uh, did uh, a dust painting. But she used to work with a, a Hoover. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, she did it with a Hoover, 
you to take a dust and put it in, in the studio and just run it. Like that. Yeah. Mm. So the whole it's studio different. was full with a dust cloud. It's really beautiful. <laughs> Well, Ruby, yeah. thank you so much for sharing this with us. Orly and Junat, thank you so much for joining us again. We hope to see you guys thank in, you, Sam. in Israel soon. Thank you, thank it was wonderful you, speaking with all of you. Thank you, everyone who tuned in to check us out for Paris Art Week. This is our last talk. We're, we're closing shop right now. So thank you all so much. Everyone have a nice evening. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye thank you. Bye. Good night. Okay.